you had a chance to get into Creative Fabrica Studio and play around with Spark AI, if you have not, you definitely should. Today we are working on some Halloween chip bags. They turned out absolutely adorable. And Spark AI created this image for me. I just had to enter the prompt. Hi, I'm Brenda here today with Creative Fabrica and we are going to learn all about Spark AI. We are going to create some custom chip bags and there's a little bonus at the end, so make sure you stick around. If you've not done so yet, you're going to want to click the subscribe button down below. Creative Fabrica has a ton of awesome videos coming out. You're not going to want to miss them. For today's project, you're going to want to have some individual sized potato chips. You'll need some glossy photo paper. I'm using 36 pound paper. It's really thin and really easy to work with. And I even have it labeled for chip bags. I'm working with pinking shears to trim the edges and give it a nice finished look. But if you do not have pinking shears, a regular pair of scissors will work just as well. I'm using double sided tape for the adhesive and the paper crimper just finishes it all off perfectly. We are starting off in Creative Fabrica today, so head over to their website, then come down to where it says Studio. This drop down menu is going to pop up and you wanna head over to AI Tools. We are going to create AI images today. This page is going to pop up. This is where you're going to type in your prompt. You can change your project size here, which we will get to in just a minute. This is where you can change the aspect ratio of the image that is going to be created. Right now it is set to square. The ratio is one to one. If you click on this arrow, it brings up a drop down menu and I'm going to switch this over to four to three landscape mode. And now we can come back up here and change our ratio so that it reflects that four to three. We can double click here and I'm going to enter 4,800 and over here 3,600 and click on apply. Now my design area is a bit larger, but it is also in the right aspect ratio. If I would have left it at 1200 by 1200, my design space would have been square, not landscape, but also when you export it, it would have been a lot smaller. We are going to import this into Silhouette Studio in just a minute to get it ready to print. And we want the larger image so that the image quality stays intact. Now for our prompt. We're going with Halloween background with a castle, cemetery, and bats on a dark background. Add bright pinks, oranges, and purples. Now we can click on create image and this pops up. It tells you that it is generating the images and that it is going to take just a minute. If we scroll down a bit, you can see this is what it has created. If we click on one, it will set it up on the design area and we can just drag that out to size. If this is in your way, you can close it out and bring it back up just by clicking on that. I really do like this one. Let's take a look at the next. You can get rid of this by clicking on the trash can up here. Open up our Spark AI again, scroll down, and let's grab the other one. I'm having a super hard time deciding which one I like best, so I'm going to shrink that down a bit, open up the AI, and actually bring them both on the mat so I can get a better look and compare. I do really like the jack-o'-lanterns in this one. It's a nice touch, but I think that this one is going to work better for our project. So I'm going to delete this one and scale this back out to size here so that it covers the whole page. Now we just need to go up to share and download. And I want this as a PNG file and you can see that it went straight up into the downloads and I can open it up from here. However, we want to open it up in Silhouette Studio. My page is already set up to letter size. I have my print border on. I can turn off the cut border. We're not going to be using a Silhouette machine today. We're just going to trim up anything we need to trim by hand. We can go up to File and Merge. And this is the image that we just created. So let's bring that onto the mat. 
any image is quite large. That's what we wanted and that is why we scaled up the size of our design mat over in studio. Since I'm working with an eight and a half by 11 inch page, I can come up to the height, double click and switch this over to 8.5 click on enter, center it to the page. And we could print this out and use it as is, but I want to label what chips are in the bag. We're just gonna go with regular potato chips. Now this color and font does not fit with our theme at all. So let's open up our textile panel and choose Spooky Midnight. This font is from Creative Fabrica. There will be a link in the description for that. That font looks much better. Now we need to justify that to the center and decrease my line spacing so that the words are a little bit closer. To select a color that's going to go well with our scheme, we can open up our color palette at the top, grab our eyedropper and choose one of the colors from inside of this image. I think I like this light yellow that's going to pop against the dark background here. Let's bring that down in size some. We can get it to pop more with an outline. So while that is selected, you want to open up your offset panel. Click on offset. I want to go with squared corners, not rounded. Click on apply, right click and group all of that offset together. Let's fill it in with black and give it a black outline. And that makes it stand out just a little bit more. Let's work on making sure everything is going to be lined up. When you're working with chip bags, you need to divide your design into three spaces. The front of the chip bag is going to be the center. Then you're going to fold this side and this side around and seal it in the back. Let's start off by scaling this down so that it fits within the print border. Grab this side and squeeze it in. I don't think it's going to distort it too much. And now we can see the exact width of our chip bag. It's 10.769 and we need half of that for the front. So we can grab a rectangle and draw that out. It doesn't have to be exact, but we want it close. If we set this width at 5.4, that is close enough. We can set this to no fill color, switch these lines over to white. I think that'll show up best on this background. Hold down our shift key and select our image along with the rectangle we just drew. We can align the centers of the two and see that this design is pretty much perfect for this project. The main part of the design fit within our boundary that we just created. I want to adjust the font a little bit, but I need to group the offset and the words together. So I'm going to make sure that our border and our image are grouped together and move those away. Select this, right click and group that together. Drag this back onto our design area, right click and send it to the back. Now our font and our offset are grouped together and we can move them around and adjust them. I think I want them over to the side a little bit and let's scale it down. I did decide to switch my text over to orange. Now we just need to ungroup this, delete the rectangle and it's ready to print. Head up to file, down to print, click on print. Now I'm going to go into my preferences and switch this up a little bit. I will be printing on letter size paper. I'm going to select premium photo paper glossy. Set the quality to high, click on okay, and then print. Here is our printed sheet. It turned out absolutely stunning. Spark AI did a great job with the image. Super impressed. I'm going to use pinking shears to trim off the top and the bottom edges. Now we're going to trim off one edge. We don't want the white showing. We can leave the white on this edge and tape it underneath this edge in the back and it'll give us just a little bit more room to work with. You wanna hold this up and place the bag down in the middle. Fold this side over and this side as well. 
That seam should be nice and secure and flat. And if your image is not properly lined up, you can twist it a little bit so that the label is more round to the front. Now the chips should be centered in our little package and use double-sided sticky tape to press both sides together. Now for the finishing touch, we're going to run both ends through the paper crimper. You almost need three hands to operate this thing, but the results are amazing. Now we have customized chip bags for all of our favorite ghouls and goblins this year. And it's super simple to take this project one step further. Just modify the design a little bit and you can create a gift bag. You can wrap a Hershey's chocolate bar, some Reese's peanut butter cups, and whatever else you like. Throw in a few stickers and you have an amazing Halloween treat. Oh,